Wow. Thank you. Better hear you. Okay. So we're just going to close off the meeting with a few final thoughts. Uh, Betty Burke, our executive director, would. Uh, Uh, I would say that uh, I've been very impressed with the, the content and the quality of the speakers. I'd like to definitely give a special thank you to the presenters. Uh, tutorials were amazing, tracks were amazing, plenary sessions were, uh, were amazing as well. So we just give them a hand. Thank you. Betty? Actually, I'm going to make um, just a brief announcement. My actual slides are at the end of the deck, but I'm going to start um, sort of in reverse order of the deck and then turn the rest of the closing remarks over to Patrick Gilmore. Uh, clearly, the fall meetings are always uh, a little busy and a little hectic because it's our annual elections. My job as the executive director of Nan August to keep our, our new process of organizing a nonprofit and electing officers going well and keeping as many folks as we can engaged in the process. I'm really, really pleased to report to the membership today that 20% of the eligible voters did in fact vote. So not 100%, but certainly an engaged process. And I believe from the feedback, the process this year for voting was easier than last year, so we're making progress there as well. Any of you who are in our membership community and had any issues voting or, or concerns about the process or from the community who need to know more about membership, I'm the person. Come talk to me. Let me know uh, your thoughts and opinions. The results of the uh, elections are now closed. They closed at 5 p.m. yesterday, and uh, we have successfully appointed three new board members. If you're in the room, Steve Feldman. Stand up, please. Mike Smith. And Dan Golding. So um, very, very pleased to have a nice, stable board in place and moving forward. One of the things I wanted to share with the community from um, the microphone here is what's next, because many of you have had this um, question and I want to make sure that it's answered. What's next is this uh, board will meet this afternoon. Uh, we have a big packet of information for them and a long agenda for their afternoon. Um, the important part of whoa, uh, what they need to do is appoint members of the various committees. So they uh, will be setting uh, time aside this afternoon at the end of this very long meeting to appoint members to the program committee, the development committee, and then the communications committee. Those committees will then meet and they will self-appoint their chair and vice chair so that we can get ready for NANOG 57. The other thing that the uh, board of directors will now do is embrace the new set of bylaws which all passed. All the bylaw amendments did pass, so thank you to everyone for giving the board the support they needed this year, and we're on about carrying on the uh, good work of NANOG. So with that said, that's elections, and I'm going to turn the closing remarks now over to Patrick. Hi, everybody. I'm Patrick. Most of you know me. Those who don't uh, haven't been listening. Uh, so uh, I think next, what do you know? Thanks to our hosts. Um, cannot say enough about our hosts and sponsors because uh, I, I happened to do the closing plenary last, uh, last time and I mentioned that it, at that Nanog, it had been five years since we raised uh, the prices of Nanog. And now it's five years in one Nanog and we still haven't raised the prices. And the reason is these people on the screen so, um, and I think given that this is not Comdex and they, they get flashed up here like once or twice a day, but you don't see them banners everywhere and they don't get to stand up here and give you marketing presentations, that their dollars are more precious than, you know, normal marketing dollars and we really, really appreciate them and I think everyone should give them a massive round of applause.
and even more, uh, if you liked any of those uh, drinks, I, for instance, I got comments that it's really nice to have the coffee there the entire time instead of just at breaks and stuff like that. Uh, and we have breakfast and we have break f food and we have, um, you know, I can't go on about everything that we do. But the fact is, although these g people give slightly less dollars, they're still important. The majority, uh, the aggregation of all of them, without it, we wouldn't be able to put on the conference for the way we do. So everybody, round of applause. So special thanks to the Board of Directors, Program Committee, Development Committee, Communications Committee, members, sponsors, attendees, Amos, Verlin, Swank, and Tim Pozar. Um, the, uh, the majority of people up on that screen, even though you don't see a bunch of ma names, they're all unpaid volunteers. Uh, and if you've ever volunteered for something, then you go, oh, well, that's really hard. You don't understand the amount of time and effort that these people put in to make sure that you guys have a good time, that the conference goes off well. Think about what you, you just saw with this panel that just happened. Uh, we've had people from the FC, FCC up here. We've had um, the major vendors, the major uh, providers. Every single person in this room has been enriched by every experience when they come to Nanog. Even if you thought the Nanog wasn't very good in the past, even the bad ones, you got something good out of it. And these people are the reason. And they deserve as much thanks as you can give them. And I'm not saying that because I'm no longer one of them. So it, it really is important that they get appreciation since that's really the only thing they get paid in. Thank you, everybody. So statistics, 599. I should have registered Tigger. We could have got 600. Um, 580 on-site attendees, so it means we got 19 people to pay us and not show up. That was actually kind of cool. 158 newcomers. Uh, that's actually slightly lower than average, but you know what? We'll take it. Um, the newcomer breakfast was actually more better attended than the ones I've seen in the past, so that's, I like that. 11 students. I'd like to see that up. If you guys know any students, can you have them come here? Because you know, they're our future and every other buzzword you can think of, but they need to come and see what the real world is like. Um, you know, it's good to have people who have basic knowledge come in because some of us weren't trained that way, but they also need the other half of it. Uh, 27 speakers, 100 members. There's actually, what is it, 388? I think there's 388 members. Is that right? Yeah, 388 members. 100 of them, 383? 333. Sorry, 333 members. Um, and 100 of them are here. That means 233 people paid to be members and didn't even come to the conference. I think that's support for the community and that's really good. 64 sponsor representatives. Uh, the reason that, by the way, in case it isn't clear, the reason we break these out is because they pay different amounts or not at all. So the sponsor representatives can actually come without paying the 450 or whatever dollars. Instead, because you buy a $5,000 break, you get one or two, I forget, people that can come and stand at the break table, which I think is fair and makes sense, but trying to be open and honest, this is how it breaks out uh, when you come in. Walk-in registrations, we love to have a few of those because we charge them extra, uh, but not too many because then it screws up things like the number of cookies we have to buy. 16 cancellations, seven paid no-shows, and two non-paid no-shows. Um, countries, shockingly, the United States is the vast majority of people coming to Nanog. I am surprised. Canada, being the other part of North America as far as Aaron's concerned, uh, is uh, the next best. Uh, then comes Japan, Germany, and Brazil. We usually have a couple other countries there, and I think that's a little lower than the normal list, but we'll take it. So, uh, organization descriptions. Um, this is really so that you guys can see the type and breadth of people that come to Nanoc. It isn't just a bunch of ISPs or Google and Microsoft. It's actually a massive number of different types of organizations. And you'll also notice uh, some people talk about the fact that, like, at least in the past, not so much anymore, but like Cisco used to send 40 people to Nanog. Are they taking over Nanog? Well, clearly that's not even close to the case anymore. So it's really good. You can come here, you can talk to just about anybody, and you get a nice wide breadth. I, I can't think of a, a better way to say that Nanog is useful and functional. So um, some reflections. This is actually for me. Hi, my name's Patrick. I'm an outgoing board member. I was termed out. Um, see, two and a half years ago, I walked around to the other, at the time, they were called uh, steering committee members. And I said, hey, you know what? I think it's time that we become our own organization. 
And um, I'm proud to say that there was unanimous agreement and we decided that we would do is create uh, our own nonprofit. And we all thought about it and we sat down and we went, you know, it's gonna be really hard, but we have, you know, some support and, and we had all these plans and of course it was nothing like what actually happened. Um, instead, it was a lot harder than we thought, but we were far, far, far more successful than we ever thought. No one in our wildest dreams thought that in two and a half years we'd have half a million dollars in the bank, that we'd have 600 people coming to a nanog, that nobody would notice the transition, that the rules and regulations would be you know, well-defined, that people would participate. Our original spreadsheets had 100 members as you know, the top line estimate. Like that was like if we could get to 100, we'd be happy. We have 333. What's more is that I'm really proud of the community for standing up and, and doing what we said we would do and for you guys supporting us. Aaron, supporting us, uh, John left, he used to be sitting right there. Aaron stepped right up, didn't even blink and said, you guys need some money, we, we know you're good for it, here's some cash, go do what you need to do and we will be paying off the last of that loan uh, right after this nanog. Uh, Joe Provo, sitting right here uh, in the front row, he was a member of the steering committee and even though he was, um, you know, the steering committee had term limits. When his term came up, even though we had changed to a or new organization, he stood up and said, you know what, I'm not gonna change the rules for myself. I'm gonna do what the community expects everybody to do. And he stood down, just like everything. That made that one, for instance, self, um, you know, I don't know what to call it. That, that one set of taking back his pride and doing what he decided was right for the community made everyone else feel like the Nanog board was standing up and doing what it thought was right for the community, not for itself. Now I'm doing the same thing, although it's not as tough for me because I want to get the hell out, but that's beside the point. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's just been a really, really proud and amazing couple of years. And I want to thank everybody, not just in the room, but watching on the webcast and all the members who paid and all the people on the mailing list who have supported the community, who've actually you know, contributed in some way, whether it's speaking, whether it's just filling out your forms, uh, your, your survey forms at the end so that we know what to do better next time. Whether it's, you know, getting somebody else to come to Nanog or offering, you know, to help get a talk set up. All these things help and it wouldn't work without you guys. And I really don't think there's anywhere in the world, I, I honestly don't, I go to a lot of conferences. If you know me, you know how much I travel. I go to a lot of conferences and there isn't one, in, at least not in this industry, that, doesn't ha that has as much participation, that doesn't have um, some oversight from somebody who's spending money on some consultant to tell them what to do, that's really self-organized, that is good for the community and does what it says. So thank you all. And I think that's it. Election results. <laughs> I wasn't expecting questions, but Paul? Uh, Patrick, I wanted to not only thank you Oh, for wait, your... who are you? I am Paul Vixie <laughs> from the Aaron Board of Trustees. Uh, so, Patrick, thank you for your service. And I also want to say, as a member of the Aaron Board, uh, we are extremely pleased with everything that you've done. Uh, the, the initial steering committee, the board since then, this is a gigantic success story for our region, and we could not be more proud to be in that region with you. So thank you. Yeah, there is one last thing, which we always do at the end. We actually used to do this, this was like, be like the first time you found out, so it's not as exciting anymore since it's on the website, but the next Nanoc, hosted by Cyrus One in, well, I think it's, a, it's in Orlando, but I can't actually read that, so. <laughs> yeah, it's in Orlando. So um, everybody come to Orlando in February. Oh, and don't forget, it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It is not Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that doesn't make any sense, but you know what I mean. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday only. So I will see you all there, and if you have um, any comments or you uh, like or dislike what I said, please talk to the new board. Bye-bye. <laughs>